Hi, it's Steve with Brownells here with another edition from the vault. And today we're going to take a look at the Smith & Wesson model of 1917, the large frame revolver chambered in 45 ACP. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with this uh, firearm, let me give you a little history. This is a gun that was made pretty much for World War I. Um, Smith and Wesson and others saw that uh, the U.S. was going to enter the war, and it uh, didn't take long to figure out that we wouldn't have enough 1911s to go around. They'd just been adopted. They hadn't been in production all that long. It was the official gun, and the 45 ACP was the official cartridge. So Smith and Wesson took a look at their line, and what they had was their 44 second model hand ejector, which is made in 44 Special, which is this basic gun. This just has a little shorter barrel and a couple modifications. So let's take a look at what they did. One of the big differences is the gap behind the cylinder here, and that's to make room for this moon clip. Now the originals were half moon clips, but they're kind of hard to find today. Most shooters are using full moon clips, and it was really a pretty slick idea. Um, Joseph Wesson gets the credit for inventing that. He was Daniel Wesson's son. I'm sure the Smith & Wesson Engineering Department gave him a little help with this, but he gets the credit, he got the patent and all that. The great thing about the clips is you can drop a lot of rounds in in a hurry for a fast reload, and you have positive ejection. Because this is a rimless round, 45 ACP, you try to use a Smith & Wesson ejector, nothing happens. That's why the clip is necessary. You can fire the gun this way, but you're going to have to use your fingernails to pick these out. And you know what they say about fine motor skills under stress. It doesn't work so well. Now, later on, uh, the Peters Ammunition Company found a way around this, and it was a pretty obvious solution. They came up with the 45 auto rim cartridge. And if you'll notice, this has a much thicker rim than your normal 44 Special 45 Long Colt. That's because... It has to be the same height as the rim of the 45 ACP plus the clip. And with this round, you load this as you would any other revolver, a 38, 357, what have you. And ejects just fine. It's also a pretty cool round because you can load this up to 40, 45 long Colt levels. Not Ruger levels, but regular Smith & Wesson levels with no problem. And you got all that... Uh, powder you're saving. You can use fast burning powders. Really a nice round to shoot. So all told, Smith & Wesson made over 150,000 of these for the U.S. government, and Colt made their version of the Model 1917, their big new service revolver. They made over 150,000 of those, I believe. So quite a few of them. Later on, 1937, Brazil ordered 25,000 of these from Smith & Wesson, and you'll find those for sale now and then. They'll have the Brazilian crest here on the right side, on the side plate. Those were built the same way, very nice revolvers. And then later on, Smith & Wesson uh, had commercial versions of this that were highly polished, really nicely done. And later that became the Model 22, I believe. And they reintroduced that in their classic series just a little while back. They were available for a while. And there was even a color case frame version of that, if I remember right. Pretty slick revolver. It's a big 45 with a lightweight barrel, fixed sights, just a neat gun. And that concept lives on because in 1950, Smith & Wesson came out with the target version. This is a model of 1955 or 25-2. This has got all the bells and whistles, target sights, target trigger, target hammer, target grips, just a beautiful full-size Smith & Wesson. And a lot of those were shot in competition back in the day, before the 1911 uh, took over. Also, you can buy the uh, 625, the stainless version of this. This also uses the full moon clips. Very nice. And this one, this gun, this modern gun, is more accurate because of the tighter throats. So it tends to shoot uh, most types of ammunition very well, where these can be picky and these can be very picky. So that's a step forward. So that's it for the 1917 Smith & Wesson, a gun that served from World War II all the way into Vietnam with some tunnel rats. Quite a design, and the end frame lives on today in many guises. 
If you ever get a good deal on one, don't pass it up because they are nice firearms. Hope you enjoyed this. If you have anything you want to tell us about the 1917 revolver or any of the 45 ACP revolvers made by Smith & Wesson or Colt or anyone else, we'd like to hear from you. Please leave us a comment. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time when we bring you another gun from the vault.